Hey everybody, it is Pastor CG here. I hope you guys are ready for an awesome Sunday morning. Um, we are diving into a new series this month, God's Kingdom, Equity, Diversity, and Truth. And this is truly a message of the heart. So I'm really excited to be hosting today. Um, if you're new with us this morning, welcome to Hopeland Online. Um, please text the word new to the number on the screen. We want you to know what's going on. We want you to stay connected. And if you want to know uh, more about Hopeland Church, that's the way to do it. So just text new to the number on the screen. For all of you who are joining us this morning, share it. Share it with as many people as you think would benefit from this. Let your family and your friends know. Um, we want them to be blessed by this message as well. I hope you guys enjoy worship and the word today. Darkest hours 
What's up, everybody? Pastor Sean and Crystal Gale here. Hey guys. We hope you enjoyed the worship today, and we are launching a new series today. Yep. Our new series is God's Kingdom, Equity, Diversity, and Truth. Um, this is like a, a very personal series for me. Um, I really believe that God dropped this on my heart. Uh, maybe not that title. We kind of, it's kind yeah. of evolved since he first spoke it to me, but really talking about God's heart. What does his kingdom look like here on earth? How are we responsible for establishing the kingdom of God on earth? And these topics, equity, diversity, and truth, how are those intertwined in um, the kingdom of God and how it's established and how it's reflected to the world? Um, and I really believe that as we go over the course of this month, um, that God is going to reveal even to us, but in us, his divine purpose for his kingdom being established here on this earth. And that is applicable for every child of God, for every believer, for everyone who makes Jesus, who has chosen to make Jesus Lord of their lives. Um, this is relevant and this is important because these are the times we're living in. We need to be identified um, in some way. And we talked about identity last month. And this is really an extension of that. Now that we identify ourselves as children of God and knowing who we are in God, now it's time to bring to pass what he expects us to while we are here on this earth. We are all here on purpose for a purpose for such a time as this. So now's not the time to be messing around with, with um, identity and not knowing why we're here when it's very clear um, God's heart for us and God's heart for the world. So I'm really excited about this series. I'm really excited um, to be able to share from the heart what we believe God's speaking to us about this. Um, and I pray that you guys are blessed this month, that there's deeper truth and understanding that the Holy Spirit begins to work in you. Amen. It's good stuff. So I'm going to pray, <laughs> and then we're going to jump in. As you can tell, it's really something that lives inside of my wife's heart here. <laughs> from the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Praise God. <laughs> so let me pray and then we will we'll dive in here so uh, we're gonna share a couple of things we're gonna come out we're gonna we're gonna say what our first point is here in a minute and then we're gonna meet you in John chapter 18 verse 35 mm -hmm. uh, and we're gonna read to verse 37 uh, and so this is kind of a, the, a verse that's really gonna kind of yeah. encapsulate what we're gonna share today from the Word of God so let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word. Yes, we pray Lord. you speak to everybody. Mm -hmm. And I, we pray you give them ears to hear what yes, the Spirit God. says, not what we say, mm -hmm. not what we have to say as people, mm -hmm. but Holy Spirit speak through us. And Lord, give people ears to hear what you say today. In Jesus' In name. Jesus name. Amen. Amen. All right, here we go. So here's our first point. It's not a point. It's a question. <laughs> what is the kingdom of God? What is the kingdom of God? And I know we, we hear that a lot. Like we even read it in the scripture. Um, Jesus mentions the kingdom of God quite often um, when he speaks. And the, we've de there's a dictionary definition. And then this is how we've defined it based on the word of God. So dictionary definition first. It says the domain over which the spiritual sovereignty of God or Christ extends, whether in heaven or on earth. That's the dictionary.com definition, one of the definitions anyway. Mm -hmm. um, but this is how we've chosen to define it. Right. Uh, this is how we've defined it. God's sovereign rule over us, in us, and through us. <laughs> right? We, 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 we read the, the real definition, thought maybe we could say it Make a simpler it, yeah. way. <laughs> Let's break <laughs> it down. Make this easier. Let me break it down for you. Maybe we broke it down for ourselves. But <laughs> God's sovereign rule over us, in yes. us, and through yes. us. Every that's, kingdom that's points to a king. Mm -hmm. Kingdom is a person mm -hmm. that rules a domain. King. Kingdom. Mm -hmm. King's domain. Mm -hmm. Christ's domain. The place, time and space, 
where Jesus rules. It's good, Bam. isn't it? And this is something I feel like as you were saying it, I was yeah. like, this is something we can take through this whole series. Right. Series, yeah. sorry. Just this. God's sovereign rule over us, in yes. us, and, and through, through us. us. God's sovereign rule over us, in us, and through us. Like, it's that's like, I feel like I'm in kids' church. <laughs> Oh, say it over and over and over again, Let's and you'll do the hand motions. It. No. It's God's sovereign rule over, over us, us, in us, us, and through us. So, however, um, whatever you take from this, remember this: that Jesus is King. <laughs> yeah, that's it. God is sovereign. Preach it. And the Holy Spirit is here on on earth with us to help us, to teach us, to guide us into all truth mm -hmm. and they all work in conjunction in our lives. And we're gonna talk a little bit about that um, as we dive in. So first verse. First verse, John chapter 18, verse 35 to verse 37. And uh, I'll read it. Uh, once again, John chapter 18, did I say 18? 18, verse 35 to 37, I'm not sure. But here we go, <laughs> Pilate answered, am I a Jew? Look at this, this is powerful. Your own nation and the chief priests, which was, Jesus was uh, recognized as a rabbi. So this is his people, not only ethnically, religiously, naturally, but his vocation, the people he was, he dressed like, yeah. okay? Yeah. They wore the same garments, every, you know, this is his people in a sense, from a natural perspective, yeah. cultural, yeah. religious. Yeah. Your own nation and the chief priests have delivered you to me. What have you done? Verse 36, 36, Jesus answered, my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would fight so that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now, says it again, my kingdom is not from here. Man. Verse 37, Pilate therefore said to him, are you a king then? What? Jesus answered, you, you say rightly that I'm a king. For this cause I was born, and for this cause I have come into the world, mm. that I should bear witness to the truth. truth. Everyone who is of the truth hears my voice. I'm gonna say this, I'm gonna let my wife jump in here, but we are not building or propagating a cultural kingdom as Christ followers, okay? We in Christ, are all a part of establishing a spiritual kingdom. Jesus yeah. says, my kingdom is not of this world. Mm. Those might look like my people, but, <laughs> but they're not my people. Like on a spiritual level, they were not his people. Ethnically, yes. Religiously, yes. Geographically, yes. But, he, but he's like, no, 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 that ain't me. And that ain't my kingdom, okay? So the kingdom of God is spiritual. It is not of this world. I'm just gonna read a couple of these notes. Mm. So only those who know the truth, capital T, can understand the kingdom of God. The Bible says that you can't even see the kingdom mm -hmm. until you're born again. That's why people in your world cannot understand your lifestyle or what you're doing because they There's can't no see it. Salvation they can't is see the it. Gateway. This isn't natural. It's not from this world. It's not from this, this earthly generation. Mm -hmm. This is a mystery. This is spiritual. Yeah. This is in God. And this is what we are a part of as Christ followers. Yeah. We are a part of a kingdom that is not from here, okay? So here we go, let me finish this statement here, okay? Can I understand the kingdom of God? We are children of God, so we are identified by how we establish his kingdom on earth. And I love this. Like, I'm just gonna dive in a little more into some of the verse here. It says, my kingdom is not of this world. This is verse 36. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would fight. Then it jumps down. My kingdom is not from here. Number one, Jesus is establishing, like, I'm not of this world. I'm here right now, but I know where I am from. The same thing happens to us when we become followers of Christ, when we make Jesus Lord. We are now shifted and changed into a different understanding. It's like a dimension thing mm -hmm. that happens where it's like, wow, my eyes are open and mm -hmm. I can see, mm -hmm. I can see the truth. Mm -hmm. He's he's establishing, I'm not from here, number one. Kingdom's not from here, number one. Number two, he says, 
for this cause. Mm -hmm. No, no, let me jump back before he says, you are rightly, you are, you speak right that I am the king. He identifies who he is. Jesus Mm -hmm. knows who he is. Identity. He knows where he came from and he knows who he is. And he knows where he's going. Exactly. And (laughs) then he says, for this cause, Mm -hmm. his purpose was clear. He said, for this cause, I was born. And for this cause, I have come into this world, meaning that I have come from somewhere else. Mm. I know where I'm from. I know who I am. Mm -hmm. And I know what I'm here for. And I think it's so important as believers to know where we're from, number one, Mm. who we are, Mm. number two, so we can establish what God wants us to do on this earth, which is establish his kingdom. It is all connected. Your identity has, you have to know who you are, people. Mm. It is so important to know who you are and where you've come from so you can do what God has called you to do in this earth. All right, now turn in your Bibles to Matthew chapter 12, verse 28. I'm gonna read a few verses here quickly um, just to kind of reiterate and establish what Crystal Gale just said. And, and also the, reiterate ahead, yeah. and establish like the things we started with, that yeah. God's sovereign rule, what is kingdom of God? God's sovereign rule over us, in us, and through us. Watch these verses here. Go All ahead, right. babe. Do okay. it again. Say that again. The first, like, <laughs> say it first. Say it. It's God's sovereign rule over us, in us, and through us. Okay. All right. Yeah. Here we go. Here I like go. to do the hand motions. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to remember this. Okay. Matthew 12, 28. But if I cast out demons, this is Jesus talking, by the spirit of God. Somebody say Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Somebody say cast out devils. Cast them out in Jesus' name. Yeah. My <laughs> wife threw in in Jesus' name. Because uh, we yeah. cast them out. Yes, we do. That's right. Yes, we do. <laughs> Look at your neighbor and tell him I cast out devils. In, I cast, cast out, out devils. devils. Look back at him and say in Jesus' name. In Jesus', Jesus name. name. Come out. All right. But I <laughs> come out. In the name of you Jesus. You get so excited. Go ahead, babes. But, I, but if I cast out demons by the Spirit of God, surely the kingdom of God has come upon you. Come up. On you. God's rule. Sovereign rule on. over us. When the devil gets kicked out, guess what happens? The kingdom comes. Okay? What? Jesus, the model prayer, the model prayer is, Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. All right. So that's Matthew 12, 28. Such a good verse. We could talk a lot about that. Luke so chapter much. 9, verse 2. We have okay? a few verses here. Just, just to, I mean, there's so many. We don't have time for all of them. We got all month to kind of go into this, but yeah. we just really want to lay a solid foundation here for what is the kingdom of God. Yeah. Okay. Here it is. Luke chapter 9, verse 2. He sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the mm-hmm. sick. Okay. That was that is the message. Yeah. That is the mandate. Yeah. It isn't preach, talk about biblical principles, and just let people live a worldly life <laughs> and give them principles so they can make their earthly life a little better. <laughs> that is not the kingdom. No, okay. Not. The kingdom message is Jesus is Lord yeah. of it all. all of and, it. And, and we are in his domain now. Right. This isn't let me pick and choose what I want. The king, the the gospel of the kingdom is not a um, some sort of what do you call those restaurants where you can just eat what you want? Are you talking about a buffet? Buffet. Right. Yes. Thank you. That we don't do buffets. <laughs> I mean, you know what I'm saying. Especially nowadays. You know what I mean. Other people touching that stuff. Heat I lamps. All that. Especially like a sushi buffet. I don't understand. How, anyway, there might be a nice bougie Why? sushi. You're gonna yeah. get anyway. like a whole bunch of suggestions. I know. <laughs> I know right. For sushi I know we're a really buff- good buffet, but we're, we're not buffet people. No, I'm you not. Know what I'm saying? Exactly. Trying to go I to can buffet. do it for right. a moment, maybe. Yeah. But I'm and not it's a like, huge man, person. all kind of little kids <laughs> reaching up and grabbing stuff. You know what I mean? So, but the point is that the he said he sent them to preach the, the kingdom, kingdom of God. So, what is that saying? Preach mm-hmm. God's sovereign rule. What? On us, in us, and through us. And in other verse, another scripture, it says the gospel of the kingdom. Mm. So they're, they're one in the same. They're one in the same, okay? And to heal the sick. So um, my good friend, I'm gonna let Crystal Gale talk here, but my, my good friend Richard Mulder um, was guest speaker in person recently. And he was saying how 
Man, Jesus, whenever he told, he told, he told his disciples and his apostles three, three yeah. things. And then he told the 120, uh, they were going to wait in the upper room for the Holy Spirit. Told them three, three, three things, preach the kingdom, mm -hmm. heal the sick, cast out devils. What? We just saw it in these two verses, preach, preach the, the message of the kingdom. Mm -hmm. Okay. Preach the kingdom of God, yeah. God's rule, heal the sick, cast out devils. What? Hallelujah. The glory to God. <laughs> we just have one more verse before we transition to the next point. But if you turn in your Bibles to Luke chapter 17, verse 20, that's uh, Luke chapter 17, verse 20. Um, and it reads like this. Now, when he, he was asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come, he answered them and said, this is Jesus talking. The kingdom of God does not come with observation. Mm -hmm nor will they say see here or see there for indeed the kingdom of god is within you mm -hmm. and what i love about this is that it's not the kingdom of god is not something that is observable like you can observe it like you can look at it happening but it's within you meaning that the kingdom of god is at work inside of you and when it's at work inside of you it will come out of you. You don't like you. You're not transformed by by Jesus and nothing. There's no outward reflection of that transformation happening inside. That's that to me is if you if you say Jesus is Lord and there's nothing that is um, um, an outward reflection of Jesus working in you. I wonder because it's more than just, and people are like, oh, it's not about what you do. It's, it's not about um, striving for, for perfection or striving for salvation. The active work of the Holy Spirit inside of you produces something. Mm -hmm. And in order for mm -hmm. it to, pro there has to be something that comes mm -hmm. out of production. So what is being produced? Mm -hmm. There's always a finished product. So There's bad. always something that comes out of something at work in you. Mm -hmm. So the kingdom of God is within you. And if the kingdom of God is within you, there is an outward reflection of what God is doing in you. And that's why I think Jesus was saying the kingdom of God doesn't come with observation. It's not something that you see someone doing it and you're like, oh, I can do that too. A lot of what we do in this world as believers, as Christ followers, it's empowered by the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. How do I love somebody who treats me wrong? I am empowered by the Holy Spirit. It's not something I can do in the natural. It's not something that I can conjure up inside of me and, and with my own will make it happen. It is not possible. There are some things that are only supernatural and can only be supernaturally um, produced inside of us. We can say that we love people all want, but nobody truly knows what love is unless you understand the love of God and what he did for us and how he sent his son for us and how Jesus died for us. Jesus laying down his life for you and for me. No one can understand what true love is until you understand what would have been my future is no longer my future because of God's love for me. I am standing here today free from what could have been. And I believe that the kingdom of God inside of us always produces something. Mm, that is, always. That is very good. And if it's not, if there's nothing coming out of you that's of a transformative nature, that people can say there's something different there. Mm. There's something happening there. Um, mm. Then I would challenge you. I would challenge you to take an inward look. Is the Holy Spirit truly at work inside of you? Is the kingdom of God at work within you? So much so that it produces an outward reflection of that. That is so good. And I'm just going to jump here to Romans 14, 17, because what you're saying is so good that the, if the kingdom's in us and God is working in us, then what is the fruit of that, yeah, right? There has what to is coming there, right? That's the purpose. Mm -hmm. It's not. It's not outward. It's not over there no. or over here. Or I gotta go there yeah. to get it. No. Or I gotta go to this place to get it. No, it is spiritual. Mm -hmm. It is in God. It is where He reigns. And mm -hmm. Jesus said, "Look, this ain't about identifying with something on the outside of you and your life, and it's over there, and you gotta go it's there to get it." it, it 
religion. Mm. It's not it's it's not a spectator thing. No. This it, it's it, working. All right. Constantly. Yeah. So Romans 14, 17 says, For the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness, what? peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Listen. It's good. So good. <laughs> so good. Because righteousness is like right living. And the only way we can live right is if God is God's truly kingdom's working in, in, us. in us. Because not something out there. No, that ain't gonna help us. It's not willpower alone. Yes. yes, you have to put your will toward things. There's not, things yes. are just like, oh, I mm. wish it to happen, so it happens. No, there's intentionality behind decisions. But right living mm. comes from God at work inside of us. How yes. do we have peace in the middle of this crazy? Mm. How can I wake up every day and be joyful? It's because of the Holy Spirit inside yes. of me. It's not just because I eat right and you should eat right and you should exercise and you should take care of your body and you should do the things that bring you a sense of peace, but supernatural peace, yeah. something that is not explained mm. when you're going through some of the hardest things in your life and there's still a peace inside of you. Mm. That is the kingdom of God at work in you. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Yeah, and here's our second point. Um, we're gonna talk about this. Why we need a kingdom perspective. Mm. It is so important yeah. that our perspective, when we open the word, when we hear the word, when we pray, um, uh, the, 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 the perspective of our job, our education, our relationships, our family, our yeah. children, our spouse, our marriage, we must have a kingdom perspective. So yeah. we're going to get into this, why we need a kingdom perspective. All right. One more verse here before we go into some of our notes and stuff. But once again, uh, Matthew chapter 6, 33, one of the most, what most, at least in my perspective, mm -hmm. my experience, I think this one's read more than any other one. Uh, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. There's righteousness again. And all these other things shall be added to you. Yeah. Okay, it's a kingdom perspective. My life, my pursuit is God's kingdom, nothing else. Other, other things come, other things are important. But I mean, when we talk about seek, we're, we're talking about my life, the, the trajectory, the perspective of my life is God first. Yeah. Is God first. It is the kingdom of God is God's sovereign rule mm -hmm. over us, mm -hmm. on us, and in us. Mm -hmm. So a kingdom perspective is spirit. Oh, you were doing that. Yeah. Over us, in us, Okay. Uh, a kingdom perspective is spiritual. It is. Okay. Um, and it transcends culture, ethnicity, and politics. I mean, we can go on and on on what it transcends. It transcends religion. It transcends country. It transcends geography. Mm -hmm. It transcends anthropology. Mm -hmm. It transcends experience. Mm -hmm. It transcends past. Mm -hmm. It transcends habits. Yeah. I mean, I mean, the kingdom of God is absolute. It is God's rule in and on us. And this is what we live for. It's really living literally from and in a different place mm. than the rest of the world. Okay. Mm. A kingdom perspective has eternal value yeah. and creates eternal impact okay yeah. this is what i want my children to get in their heart and spirit yeah. that we are here but we are living a kingdom life yeah. this is a life of following the king of kings we, we there's these things in life that we all do we all might like jesus had the same accent as those chief priests they, he, he looked like them, dressed like them, lived among them, but he's like, that ain't me. Yeah. You know, I'm coming from a different world. So once again, the kingdom perspective is spiritual. Yeah. And it reminds me of, it just reminds me of this, when Gia was a baby, um, she was maybe a little younger than Luke's, maybe she was a year and a half, maybe two. Maybe, you know. But we had this giant picture in our house of... Um, of Jesus. Um, a friend of ours who's an artist gave us, um, gifted it to me for my birthday one year. It's a beautiful painting. And it's um, 
uh, its inspiration comes from the picture um, that that little girl drew who said she saw Jesus in heaven. She had a vision or she was dreaming and, and she saw Jesus and she came back and drew what, what she thought Jesus looked like. And I remember Gia, when she was little, looking at the picture mm -hmm. and she, not prompted by us, I think we were trying to get out of the house and she stopped and looked in front of the picture and she was like, Jesus. And I was like, wait a minute, little she girl. She was like two years old. <laughs> she was little. Like she was little. I was like, who is yeah. that? Because Nico she was, wasn't Nico born wasn't yet. Nico wasn't born yet. She and was, she's two years older yeah, than Nico. Yeah. So it was probably yeah. around that time. Yeah. And um, I was like, wait a minute. Who is that? And she said, Jesus. And I was just like. <laughs> and then after that, we would go and say, Gia, where's Jesus? She'd and she would like, point to the picture. We were like, whoa. And what, what gets me about that is she recognized him. And here's, here's, here's where sometimes things that happen in the natural that don't make sense, we shift into spirit mode because we're like, there's something spiritual that's happening here. And we all start in heaven. That's where we all come from. God created, we're made in the image of God. He He created us. We all start there. And that, that goes back to that verse um, that we read earlier about Jesus saying, I'm not of this world. Mm -hmm. She recognized Jesus even as a child. And as parents, and we were talking about what we want our children mm -hmm. to see, kingdom perspective. As parents, we want to raise our children to remember where they came from, mm. who they are, mm. and why they're here. Mm -hmm. And outside of God, you will not find that anywhere else. Mm. So even as we teach our children this, we actually have to live this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we have to yeah. remember, mm -hmm. we're not of this world. When you um, become a follower of Christ, when you make Jesus Lord of your life, your eyes are open and you understand where you've come from, mm -hmm. who you are, and what you're here for. The things that people struggle with all the time. Mm -hmm. They struggle with where they're from, identity, and what's my purpose? What am I called to what's do? My cause, what, what's my cause, as Jesus said. He knew. Yeah. And outside of God, we cannot find those things. Amen. And when we align with his will... When we align with, with what he wants for us, kingdom perspective, when we can see what he sees, when we allow the Holy Spirit to reveal truth with us, to us so we understand what he's trying to um, teach us, we have a different perspective. It changes everything. It changes how you live your life. It changes how you see people. It changes how you interact with this world. It changes how you filter information. It changes how your, your thought patterns work. It changes everything. And it doesn't make you crazy. If anything, it brings you more peace and it gives you this sense of, of um, it settles you in your heart because you understand that this is bigger than me. I'm a part of this. And if I have the right perspective, mm. my purpose will never be unclear. Mm. Who I am will never be unclear because I know where I've come from mm -hmm. and I know the source from where I need to see this world, live in this world, interact in this world, but also bring that kingdom here on this earth so people can see for themselves who Jesus is. So good. So good. So that brings us to our next point here. We're ambassadors of the kingdom. Yep. That's what we're called to do is represent him yep. in Christ. That is what we're doing. Yeah. All right. So we're going to get into now one of the kind of sub uh, points of, of the sermon series, mm -hmm. which is God's kingdom, uh, equity, diversity, and truth. So we're going to talk about equity here and how scripturally how much this is a part of God's kingdom. Mm -hmm. This is why it's so important to have a kingdom perspective because it, it shapes everything. It does. Okay, God shapes everything. It does. And yeah. it shapes, and we're gonna talk about how it shapes how we look at people. Mm -hmm. It shapes God's way of treating and honoring, respecting, and, and dealing with people. Yeah. And it's equity. 
Um, and just the dictionary definition of equity is the quality of being fair and impartial, something that is fair or just. There we go. And God's for equity because he made us all in his image. Hmm. All of us in his image. Mm -hmm. Every single one of us mm -hmm. in his image. And we're going to, do you want to say something? Sure. Well, I was just going to say, just to reiterate that, yeah. but go ahead, please no, finish. No, 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 go ahead. Go okay. Go ahead. So I was just to add on that, in our, in our morning prayer times, I was, I was praying, uh, we were praying on um, Facebook and Instagram, I think this was this past week, um, and I was just praying, talking about how uh, at the foot of the cross, it's level ground. Mm -hmm. There's no hierarchy at nope. the foot of the cross. No. So there's hierarchy in society for the purpose of authority and responsibility and all that. There, I, I, there's a healthy hierarchy, Should which be. represents, but when it comes to value yeah. in the kingdom and it comes to equity and God's approach toward humanity, period, the foot of the cross is level ground. There's yeah. no hierarchy. We all need the blood of Jesus and we are all accepted and received by him in faith. That alone is equity. The fact that he died for the whole world tells us that God holds every human being in equal value. Yeah. Amen. So here we go. Galatians chapter three. Galatians chapter three, verse 27 to 29. Galatians three, I'll start in verse 27. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Somebody say kingdom. Kingdom. Somebody say Christ rules. Christ rules. Verse 28. Here, this is what happens when Christ rules. What? This is what happens when the kingdom comes upon us. This is what happens when we get delivered of our demons. Somebody <laughs> say amen. Seriously, this is what happens when we get set free by the power of God, when he breaks yokes destroys bondages, mm. sets us free. Mm. We encounter God. We encounter Jesus. This is what happens. Christ, we put on Christ. Mm. Okay? Verse 28, there is neither Jew nor Greek. Mm. There is neither slave nor free. There is neither male nor female. For you are, for you are all one in Christ. Somebody say equity. Equity. And verse 29, and if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs, according to the promise that the just shall live by faith, faith equity for all humanity that receive him. Mm. Amen. All right. <laughs> Do you want to read the next one, babe? Sure. <laughs> well, yeah, let's read this. So yeah, turning to Bibles, my wife's going to read it, but turning your Bibles to Matthew chapter 21, verse 31. All right, guys. So Matthew 21, 31. Which of you two did the will of his father? They said to him the first. Or which of the two, sorry. They said to him the first. Jesus said to them, Assuredly I say to you that tax collectors and harlots enter the kingdom of God before you. Man. <laughs> to the religious people. <laughs> Somebody say equity. Um. <laughs> <laughs> equity. Listen, there is so much on this topic, and I'm so looking forward to diving into it. Um, but we're all equal mm -hmm. in the eyes of God. No one person is better than another. No one color, no one race, um, no gender, male or female, is better than the other. And we're going to dive in in the coming weeks a little more into some of these topics. Yep. Um, next up is diversity. The other what thing that, you oh, we have another verse. Sorry, guys. Uh, Matthew 6, verse 20. Matthew 6, verse 20. So we're still in Matthew. Just flip back a few pages. Um, then he lifted up his eyes toward his disciples and said, Blessed are you poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Socioeconomic um, equity. <laughs> God loves us all. Doesn't matter how much money you have. Doesn't matter how much money you don't have. Doesn't matter if you're old, young, you think you're pretty, you're not pretty, what, whatever. Everybody's beautiful in God's eyes, but we are all equal. We all have equal access to the kingdom of God. All of us. Hmm. Hallelujah, there it is. That's gonna be a good one to really dive it into. It is gonna be okay. a good one, I'm looking forward to it. Okay, next one, diversity. I'll read this definition of diversity. Uh, 
And and we're as you can tell, we're kind of skimming over these yes. just because we wanted to really just kind of set up for the month. Mm -hmm. um, and we're gonna have a lot of fun with these um, all month. But diversity, variety, the inclusion of individuals representing more than one national origin, color, religion, etc. Um, he's for diversity because he created different. <laughs> okay, different is a noun in this ver in this sentence. Okay, he created different. Okay, look at your neighbor and say, "Look, I'm different." Okay, you I'm just different. totally jacked up that sentence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> because he created different. Yes, right. He did. Yeah, in different languages, different places, different people, mm. different diversity. Diversity. Variety. And his kingdom should be a reflection of that. The people of God should be a reflection of that. The church on this earth should be a reflection of that. Yes, it should. Yes, it should. And when 80% uh, plus of churches in America are still one ethnicity, one skin color, mm -hmm. we have a problem because that is not a kingdom culture. It's not, okay? In this respect, it is not. It is not. We as pastors are accountable and responsible to lead in an, in an environment where kingdom is first, culture is second. Yeah. And when culture is second, all cultures are received. I believe when we make spiritual things the main thing, <laughs> All nations gravitate because we're striking a chord in the in the heart yeah. behind every skin color. Yeah. Yeah. And so when we attempt to only identify with natural culture, we're missing the kingdom. Yeah. And it's so natural for us to do that. It's a comfort thing for us. It's it's comfortable. You don't have to explain certain things. You don't have to teach certain things. You don't have to, you don't have to navigate the intricacies of mm. differences. But that's what God intended. <laughs> he wanted us to um, learn about each other. That's what, what develops relationship. It is the questions that are asked. It is those moments mm. of, I'm trying to understand, help me. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times we avoid those things. Um, because we don't have time or, mm -hmm. or life is just busy or I just really don't want to. Um, and mm -hmm. we put it on like personality type or we'll, we'll say, well, I'm just an introvert and I'm an introvert. I get it. <laughs> there are certain situations I'm like, okay, it's time to go. <laughs> yeah. I'm ready to go home. Yeah. But sometimes some of you who don't know would think that I'm an extrovert. Anything you see extroverted about me is the empowerment of the Holy Spirit inside of me. <laughs> Seriously, I love people but in small doses, like it can be very hard for me. But I'm telling you that the only way I can stand in front of people and speak, the only way I can stand in front of people and sing, the only way I can stand here and communicate with anybody um, is because of the Holy Spirit empowering me to be a reflection. It's the kingdom of God at work inside of me. Why I am here is bigger than my personality. <laughs> it's bigger than the comforts of my personality. And, and hear me, I'm not saying that you neglect who you are, who God created you to be, the, the, the beauty of who he created you to be. What I'm saying is that um, when you are obedient to him, he will give you the ability to do the things that you never thought you could do. There is something in you that people need. You could be the person who's bringing that diversity to a certain situation and only you can do it because there's something God has enabled you to do in this season and in this time. Don't rely on your natural inclinations, but rely on the spirit of God inside of you to be able to bring his kingdom to pass wherever you are. So good. Matthew 24, 14. And this gospel of the Kingdom. kingdom and this gospel of the kingdom and this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world. Mm -hmm. Somebody say diversity. Diversity. As a witness to all the nations. Say diversity. Diversity. And then the end will come. What? Diversity. <laughs> diversity. Come on now. Listen, and then the end will come. Right. And we're here preaching about 
kingdom of God show up. Yeah. Bring your diverse kingdom of God, yeah. Lord. We want yeah. it here. Yes. We're talking about these things. And we got to be willing as leaders, as pastors, like my wife just said, when it comes to diversity, it's beautiful. We love it. Look, I'm white. She's black. We live together and we love it. Okay. Like on my Instagram page, my profile, it says I'm in love with a fine black woman. I just want it clear out there. People come to my page, just know I'm taken. Okay. All right. And I'm in love with, right. And she's black. I celebrate her uniqueness. She didn't know I was going to say this, I but, that, but I do. And, and that's who she is. It's part of who she is. And I, you know, and, and it's beautiful. But I heard one pastor say one of the most, I think, racially diverse churches, probably in the South. Um, and he's an amazing man of God. I've learned some things from him. Uh, but he says there's a certain warfare that comes and a certain tension that will be there when you when you preach a kingdom message because you're going to have all different kind of perspectives all in the same room and they got to deal with each other and they're going to the same hope groups and they're serving on the same team. You know what I mean? Like there's a tension that comes with it. She's laughing because it's true, but I, I'm, we, we're okay with it. We want it. Let's let it, let's work it out. Have the hard conversation. Let's do it. I mean, Lord forbid that we were just one thing. No, we don't want that. No. We would much rather deal with the tension. Let's work out this thing in the kingdom of God, in the house of God, and let's be an example yeah. to the rest of the world. This is how you do it. Don't sing the song. Don't sing the song. All right. So, you're all hearing that song yeah, in your head. Nah, Stop. Nah, nah, nah. <laughs> all right. Nah, nah. Next up is truth. 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 Last Definition one. of truth. Go. The true or actual state of a matter, a verified or indisputable fact, proposition, principle, or the like. God is truth. Mm -hmm. Truth is foundational to this whole conversation. Yes, it's everything. <laughs> it is the basis of everything. And the beautiful thing about the gospel is that its truth transcends time. Mm. So the gospel has not changed. It is for everybody, it's for everybody, and we all have access to it, should we choose to accept it. Amen. And it's a beautiful thing. So here it is, our last verse, and then we're gonna pray. First Thessalonians 2.12 that you would walk worthy of God who calls you into his own kingdom and, and glory. glory. Walk worthy, walk worthy, mm. walk worthy. The truth, let's not try to bring lies from politics and call it kingdom. Let's not bring the lies of our own um, weaknesses, our own perspectives and call it kingdom. Let's be people that walk worthy of God who's mm -hmm. called us into his own mm -hmm. kingdom. Mm -hmm. So as you can tell, we are legit excited about this series. Um, there's so much more that we want to delve deeper into over the course of this month. Um, and we're, we're really praying and asking the Holy Spirit to speak in us, um, speak to us so, we, so he can speak through us. Um, but we're going to close out in prayer now. And yeah. Awesome. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, uh, Lord, for this word. Lord, we pray as Jesus prayed, Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, mm. your kingdom come. So we pray, God, that your kingdom would come yes, in the hearts of people, yes, God. that Lord, our lives, our very existence, mm -hmm. our coming, our going, our lying down, our rising up, our pursuits, our dreams, mm -hmm. Lord, our work, our education, mm -hmm. our, our home, our, our job, our business, our church, our ministry, yeah. Lord, all of that would be under your rule. Yes. And we say, God, your kingdom come and your will be done in every aspect yes. of who we are yes, and what we're doing here on the earth. We pray that, Lord, let your kingdom come, your will be done on earth, in our lives, as it is in heaven. Mm -hmm. And we thank you, God, uh, for the grace and anointing mm -hmm. to preach the gospel of the kingdom, God. Amen to all nations. Amen. Lord, anoint us to reach all people, mm -hmm. every people group, mm -hmm. Father God, so that the environments that we call kingdom, Lord, would represent truly your heart for people mm -hmm. and, and your heart for all people, God. Mm -hmm. In Jesus' name we pray. Jesus name. Amen. Amen. All right, we're going to 
give people an opportunity out there to accept Christ yeah. um, and, and to confess him as Lord. And so if if you are away from God, if you're not walking with God and and um, and this message just spoke to you, I want to make that invitation to you now mm-hmm. to receive him, to receive him, his grace and his love for you. So simply just repeat this prayer after me. Say, Jesus, Jesus. I come to you as I am. I come to you as I am. I confess my sins. I confess my sins. And I receive your forgiveness. I receive your forgiveness. I give you my life. I give you my life. Jesus. Jesus. You are Lord. You are Lord. Be my savior. Be my savior. Be my everything. Be my everything. In Jesus name. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yay. We are excited for you as pastors. Yeah, you're part of the kingdom of God now. <laughs> yeah, you're in the kingdom now. You're your, part of this crew. <laughs> yes, your life is where Christ sovereignly rules. Amen. All right? It's so, a beautiful thing. It it's is. It's a beautiful thing. It's beautiful. We want to go with you on this journey. We want to help you grow. We want to help you grow in faith. We want to help you grow in your understanding of who you are in Christ. Um, so we have a little something we want to send to you. It's a digital devotional that'll help you get started um, in your walk with Jesus. So if you'd like to get that devotional, just text the word grow, G-R-O-W, to 323-405-3232. Once again, text the word grow to Mm 323-405-3232, and we will send that to you. We'll text you the link to that Bible study. Yeah. Congratulations. Welcome. We have two announcements. Two. Actually, we have 2.5. All right. And we're going to announce them all. 2.5. Not quite three. Kind of three, but not really. Because anyway. Anyway. So the first one is Hope Groups. Hope Group Interest Meeting is yep. this Wednesday, September 8th, 7 p.m. on Zoom. Zoom. And it's if you're interested in groups, want to learn more about groups, want to lead a group or host a group, this is for you. But yep. you have to RSVP. Yep. The way you RSVP is text the word groups. Oops to our number, 323-405-3232. So come on in there, join up in there. We're launching groups, the interest meeting. And those of you that are online only, we have plenty of online groups, okay? So if you wanna lead one and start one or be a part of one and you're just interested in it, be at the interest meeting. Yep. Uh, second announcement. We're really excited about this one. It is worship night. Woo-hoo! It's our first worship night. Woo-hoo! What? What? Um, anyway, it is Friday, September the 10th at 7.30 p.m. Um, we are so excited about this. This is many months in the making um, and we can't wait for you guys to be a part of it with us. Um, but it's Friday, September the 10th at 7.30. We've got a lot of things happening that night, special things. And one of those things is we have something special for the kids as well. For the kids that night, it's going to be movie night. So Hopeland Kids Church is going to be movie night. We have a really cool movie we're going to be uh, premiering. And uh, okay. it's a very... Uh, we're premiere. not premiering. Well, we're not premiering. But, but the kids, yeah. it might be a premiere for yeah. them. Premiere is just a good... Movie. It's very family yeah. friendly. Yeah. We've already watched yeah. it. You so. can look it up, parents. <laughs> yeah. It's called Vivo. It's Vivo. Uh, it's on uh, Netflix. We've seen it a million times already. <laughs> uh, so it's really cool. Um, and kids are going to love it. We're going to have popcorn and just have a really fun yeah. night for kids as well. So worship night, kids movie night. Kids, bring your pillows, your blankets, whatever. <laughs> you want Get to. comfy if you want. <laughs> your sleeping bag, your um, bean bag, whatever you want. Your lawn chair, doesn't matter. You're going to bring whatever. And we're gonna, it's going to be a fun night, movies, kids. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. We'll see you guys there. Love you guys. Hey, guys. Now we're going to go into our tithe and offering this week. And we just want to thank you again for continuing to give to the ha- this house. You truly are changing lives. You're making a big difference here. So if you do want to give this week, you can text the word Hopeland to the number on the screen here. Or you can also use a Venmo and search the word Hopeland Church. So the scripture I want to share this week is from Nehemiah 10, verse 35. We promise to bring the first part of every harvest to the Lord's temple year after year, whether it be a crop from the soil or from the fruit trees. One thing I love about the scripture, I think it's a great example of how we always put God first. 
It might be in our tithe, it might be praying first during the day, it might just be spending time with him first, but he's the most important thing in our lives. So I think it's a, just a great example of that. So let's just go ahead and uh, pray over the tithe and offering this week. Dear Lord, we thank you again that we get to partner with you. We, we get to do this with you. And we thank you for providing to us so we can do tithe with you, Lord God. So we thank you for what you're doing. I pray you touch, touch everyone that hears this, this tithe and offering this week. I pray you just multiply what they have. I pray you just show up in their life and show them the faith that you continue to show us and what you're doing in their life, Lord God. So we thank you. We thank you for your blessing. We thank you for your covering. And we ask all these things in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Hey guys, did you enjoy the service today? If you did, make sure you give us a shout out on social media. Um, we're really glad that you were able to join us. Follow us, send us a message, let us know how you're doing, send us your prayer requests, stay connected. Um, but I hope and pray that this message really bears fruit in your life. Um, and I pray that the Holy Spirit continues to minister to you throughout the week. But I'm gonna pray for you right now uh, before we close. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for this community. I thank you, Lord, for the people that you brought into this Hopeland family. And I just pray, Lord, that as they continue to engage with us, as they continue to um, connect with us, I pray, Lord, that the messages, the worship would continue to be a blessing to them. I pray, Lord, that the kingdom of God would be alive inside of them, that there would be an actual manifestation of your work inside of us. And I pray, Lord, that as they go into this week, they experience the blessing of God and the favor of God. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Have an awesome week, guys. I love you.